Now then, we've got an interesting bit of kit here. It came to me in a pile of other stuff. Uh, I'm assuming it's faulty, but it might not be. It's uh, on a Ryon Tri 48 stroke 12 stroke 20, which is a Victron DC DC converter. So I'll show you the label in a minute if I can find where it is. But basically, it is. It will handle 20 amps. Yeah, I thought there was another label somewhere. And the input is 32 to 70 volts. And the output, which is adjustable, this is DC, is 10 to 15 volts DC. In maximum 20 amps. So, I don't know whether it works or not. But what we do have is a variable DC power supply and some resistance load. So, how do you work out how much resistance? This is nichrome wire. How much do you, how do you work out how much of this you need? Well, it's volts divided by current. So, if we're on 12 volts and we want 10 amps, this needs to be 1.2 ohms so you measure it so let's let's do that sort of thing and then uh, go as far as we can see there we go 32 to 70 10 to 15 20 amps okay and we have in and out those two holes there are LEDs and just down there there's the DC out variable which you do with a screwdriver. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Get that out of the way. Right, we've got some nichrome wire. Right, we're back to it now. 1.2 1 1.7 1 1.4 okay so somewhere in there okay so first of all move that out of the way we need to put some DC into this so I'm just going to uh, wire that up to the now probably infamous uh, variable DC power supply and if you've not seen this then I'll hopefully I'll remember to do a link to this at the end of this video okay that's connected and I can adjust the input voltage with that variac there okay let's come back to this and we've got a bulb attached now it's 21 watts yeah so at 12 volts that's um, about one and a half amps something like that okay let's just see let's go and switch the power on contact So stick the uh, the meter on DC. Yeah, good. Right, you can see the bulb lighting up, and we have if this thirty eight volts in. and it should be something like 10 volts out 9.9 .9 volts out okay need a different screwdriver to adjust that uh, that's the positive 
that's the negative. Okay. No, I can't get to that screw. But there you go, 9.9, .9, 38 to 9.9. .9. Great. I'm just going to get a smaller screwdriver still. It's difficult to adjust this with the camera in the way and I can't see down in the middle of the, that little hole. It is a mighty small Right, we've adjusted the voltage a bit because the brightness went up. Doesn't help with that. There we've got 11.4, hopefully you can see that. Come on. There, 11.4. Okay, I'm going to turn it up to 12, or should we say 13, and then we're going to put a load on it and see what happens with the, uh, the current. Okay, I'll be back to you in a minute. Okay, I've got that resistance wire there. Just there. Okay. So, oh by the way, these two holes here are not LEDs, they are for uh, connecting a remote switch there. And there's just a link in there, so you know you could have that trailing off somewhere and remotely switch this on if you wanted to. Okay, so there's enough of that, so that's a... Right, I think we're there. Yeah, we're on 13 volts. So I think we probably need to show that first. Can you see that? 13.1 volts. Now We've got the DC clamp meter here. And that's just showing not very much. It's a bit noisy. Right. It didn't like that. Yeah. It doesn't like that at all. And you can't see that. But... Oh, there we go. It was faulty. You saw it here first, probably. Didn't like any current through it at all. Okay, at least we've learnt something. That was um, just over 3 ohms with putting about 30 volts into it to give out 13 volts. Yeah, so 30 to 13 and um, on that, on about 3 ohms, he didn't like it at all. Yeah, so there we go. Interesting, but um, faulty. It would probably be all right with just like a one amp and that's about it, but it should do 20. But you know, according to the, uh, the rules of solar panels, never run anything more than 
50% uh, to 60% of its capabilities and its capacity. That way it'll last a long time. Be interested to see what's actually gone with this because um, if we take off that, that load, the LED is still lit. Have we still got voltage coming out of it? I suspect not. Yeah, we've still got voltage. Right. Do you know it might be a capacitor that smoked like that? It might very well be. I reckon it's a capacitor. And look at that flashing now. Yeah, so if we can have that apart, we might find a capacitor that's gone duff. Interesting. Right, I've had to take every single screw out yeah, to be able to get to the internals of this. That, whatever it is, doesn't look very happy. And this whole board is glued in. So if we to take this out, we're going to end up destroying it because I can see that various things are just in encapsulated. It looks like, well, I don't know, what do you think? It looks like that thing there was not very happy. See there's a crack in it there. Whoop. Sorry about that. And what is it? It hasn't even got a number on it, but yes, it got a bit hot. So it looks like that was the thing that got hot. But as I say, it's not got a number on it. That's a bit rubbish, isn't it? Hey. And it looks like Yeah. Where are we there? There's something goes into the case just there and it's encapsulated into it. It's all glued in there. Yeah, and that, that capacitor there is absolutely duff. So, there, see those capacitors there? And it's all glued in, so you cannot get this apart. Yeah. But that thing there, yeah, which it's got no number on it whatsoever. Oh, it has. I, uh, let me just have an investigator that. You might be able to see the number better than I can. But that's definitely gone poof. Right. Okay. Bit of extreme violence there. Yeah. And really potted in hard. We had a component on the underside. There. That packed up. And also, where are we? This capacitor here packed up. But the violence needed to get this out of the case was, see, this is really super rubbery grab hold of everything stuff. So there you go. Bit of a shame in some ways. But, um, you know, it came in as faulty and it was faulty. So there you go. Those, that is definitely not very happy. And there's some over there that are in this case that are not very happy. Look like they've got hot. But then what do you expect if they're surrounded by this sort of stuff to keep all the heat in? 
quite a complex um, bit of equipment though. There you go. Okay, well, if I'd have bought that and it had just out of guarantee, then I'd not be happy. So this is the thing that I've always been a bit sort of concerned about is you can rely on this high-tech equipment uh, but and it's great and the Victron uh, Multi Plus touch wood the two that we've had we had a three kilowatt that did what was it now 20 megawatts process 20 megawatts of power and it was still working fine when I replaced it with a 5 kilowatt and the 5 kilowatt has done a lot more since then I think 20 I might be wrong anyway besides the point it was a lot yeah um, but we never pushed it beyond about 50 percent of its capacity and that makes them last a long time so but you know the complicated stuff great but you know if you get to the point where you're totally reliant on it and it lets the blue smoke dragon out then you've got to have some low-tech alternatives um, on the shelf as it were just to keep yourself going comments please let's have a discussion I really like to think uh, hear what you have to think about the high-tech low-tech versions of things and which you think is well the most preferable yeah, the high tech really is you know a really good inverter that lasts for years and years because you don't abuse it is a brilliant thing yeah but when it goes then you have to sort things out catch up with you soon cheers for now <laughs>